my immense pleasure to talk about Waymoney's success story in the real time transaction history and analytics transformation, what we have done. Myself, Linoj Wilson, heading the software engineering team of Waymoney. Today I will be talking about Waymoney. Where are we with our high level metrics? What are the challenges we faced before this transaction history framework come into existence? And what were our technical pain points and what were our architecture before Druid? And what is the new architecture? How we transformed our old architecture to the new architecture? And with this new architecture, what are the benefits we are receiving now? And what is the new view of that architecture? Talking about wave money, which is also called as Digital Money Myanmar, established in 2015 in Myanmar as the first non-banking MFR service in Myanmar, which is currently at this day is one of the leading fintech app in Myanmar. So we started our journey with our first app, which is called as wave money. It was basically an agent based app. We are having 65,000 plus agents in the market now where our customers can go and do money transactions. They can use this agent to send money to their friends, family and relatives, and the friends and families or relatives can come and collect this money from our wave agents. They can go to this wave agents, do cash out, cash in, top ups, bill payments, loan repayments, and various other functionalities as well. Followed by the wave money, we came into the digital space with our new app, which is called as WavePay app. Again, it is a consumer to consumer based app. Consumers can do bill payments, bank cash in, cash out, bill payments, top ups, all other uh, normal payment functionalities is available in WavePay. And very recently, we launched our merchant app, which is used for our merchants. And all the QR based transactions is getting processed through our merchant apps and our merchants are conveniently receiving all merchant based transaction through our merchant app. We're talking about metrics. Wave money or wave ecosystem have a transaction of 400 plus in every seconds. And on the peak days, it goes beyond 400 also. And the volume of transaction, it is over 13 million in a day. And the number of users, if you talk about monthly active users are over 3 million. We have fully registered KYC level 2 users over 5 million. And if I talk about the total registered users, we are having over 20 million registered users in the system. Now the challenges. So the screenshot which you are seeing the right hand side is our old transaction history view. You can see there are various transactions listed and uh, you are seeing it in a list view and most of the transactions are here marked as bill payment transaction because we don't have specific transaction types uh, for different transactions in our core system. And if you see the number of transactions, you can only see 15 transaction in the entire list view. So if you want to see a transaction over a one month or over a six month period, you are not able to see in the current transaction history view what we are having. And all these 15 transaction are not always fetched from the backend also. So we have cached this transaction in the app layer and to reduce load on our backend system, we were showing this transaction from our cache layer. And what happened if user uninstall the app or clear their cache, this transaction on the cache is removed and it has to be fetched from our backend system. And our backend system is not an analytical database. It is pure OLTP based transaction and it is connected to our transaction engine or core system. So the moment I fire a query on our transaction engine, it have more impacts on other transaction which is happening in the core system. Not only that, 
this list view transaction don't have a detail view. So if you click on one of the transaction and you want to see a detailed view of transaction like who sent me money or whom I send the money or what, how much money I spend, all those things you cannot see from this uh, transaction view. And also you can see that there is no filters, there is no search available in this view. So whatever is there available in this list view is what uh, we are having. And so all transactions are tagged as bill payment. Most of the transactions are tagged as bill payment. And if you have new transaction type in the core system, we cannot show it in the app as it is. To do that, we need to do a lot of app release and a lot of code changes in our uh, uh, middleware layer, which is actually a lot of time consuming process. So these are the main challenges we were facing with the current transaction history framework. To know more detail about that, this was the architecture of all the transaction history famous framework here. When, whenever a transaction happening in our app, it is going to our API layer, then to our microservice layer, then to our core system and our core system database, which is Oracle database, which is our OLPP database. And all these transactions were pulled and showed to our uh, transaction history list view. So when we talk about the transactional database, even it was Oracle and XR data with high performance database. When you fire complex queries to pull this transaction, it was always creating performance impact. And there was another layer of problem to this core database. The transactions are scattered in multiple tables. The main transaction, the sub transaction, all are on different tables. And to pull out this transaction, I always have to do complex joins, which always had performance impact on my core transaction system. So to avoid that, we were thinking, OK, what is the better way to do this? So that is when the new framework come into the mind. We started thinking about real time analytics, event driven architecture. So that is what you are seeing in this uh, slide where the red highlighted area is the new event driven architecture based. System. So all financial uh, transactions happening in the core system, we asynchronously spawn events and threads to the Kafka layer to various topics based on every single microservices and transaction type we have. And Kafka layer streams this data into our Druid database. And once, once all the transactions are available in Druid database, it is uh, pulled to our transaction history view. So when you talk about transaction or transaction events, the only the events what is happening at the app layer is passing through our microservice layer. But there are some transaction events which is getting processed that backend, which is our uh, adjustment transaction or reversal transaction, maybe some cashbacks or top ups based on the uh, campaigns, uh, what you are uh, win. So to do that, what we have done, did that, we had a Kafka Connect attached to our OLTP database. The Kafka Connect streams the live events to our Kafka again, and these events is again streamed to Druid. So when you see Druid now, you have all the transaction which is happening at the app layer as well as the backend operation transaction. So now Druid is enriched with all the new data, all the transactional data which is helping us to have our new transaction history view. And all the aggregation analytic queries are all performed on Druid now. It is no more on our uh, Oracle core database, OLTP database. It is moved into the Druid, which is giving us high throughput performance and high value queries. So what are the benefits we are getting with the new transaction history framework? As I mentioned earlier, we are having a very low latency query and with high concurrency. And we have done any schema changes on our Oracle database, or we have not did a, a bigger ch big change on the Druid side. What we did is that whenever the transaction is coming to our Kafka layer, we had another processing layer which enriches the data and transforms it and push it back to the Druid. So we have 
all the semi-structured data processed and structured and pushed to Druid so that we will be only firing simpler search queries on the Druid so that we have higher uh, throughput on our app layer. And also we are able to stamp our transaction based on various transaction type. So previous transaction history view, we saw that most of the transaction are shown as bill payment, but with the events are triggered, we are able to categorize them as QR payments, whether it is top up or it is bill payment. So all those is available now. And we have enabled search and also filter to our transaction history view. So our customers can go and easily search by date, time, amount or type, and they can do any kind of slicing and dicing of the data on our transaction history level. And moreover that we have a detailed view of our transaction now. So every transaction list you can be clicked and you can see a detailed view of our transaction and all customers are satisfied with that. And another important thing what we achieved with the new framework is that since all the transactions are now available in our Druid, which is a new data source for our BI, our BI can pull the data from the Druid data source and use this enriched data for their improved analytics and AI dashboards. And cherry on the top is that the same event-driven framework we used for transaction history is now getting used for our notification framework also. The similar way the transaction events are triggered, the same microservice are triggering now notification events also to the Kafka and this notification events are also pushed to Druid and our notification inbox are now querying the notifications from the Druid inbox. So with the same transfer frame transformation and same architecture, we have one more use case, which is our notification use case, which is powered by the Druid. So let's have a sneak peek into the new view, what we achieve. So the list view remains same, but we have enriched transaction type here. So instead of only bill payments, we have now QR payments, we have bill collect, we have adjustments, we have bonus. So every single transaction events are categorized and shown in the transaction list view. And if you click on one of this list, you are having a detailed view of the transaction. You know what transaction type, what is the amount, what is the time, what is the fees deducted for each of this transaction. You can show the transaction type, transaction ID, and even you can share this detailed screen to any of the users. So the previous use case, our people used to take a screenshot of the transaction whenever it is happening on the success screen and used to share that screenshot to the people as a proof. Now they don't need to do a screenshot. They can just share it from the detailed view and they can show the proof of the transaction. And on the last uh, screen, you can see the improved analytics view. Now as a user, I can see how much is my credit, how much is my debit, what is my total spend and which transactions I'm spending more and I have a monthly spending um, chart as well. And this is just a beginning and we are having more and more use cases and uh, more and more charts uh, coming into the picture, which is uh, going to be beneficial for our users. So as a conclusion, we were having an OLTP based transaction engine all the queries were powered by the OLTP database. And with Druid and Apache Kafka, we are now having an event based architecture. All transactions are streamed into Druid and all high performance queries are now running on Druid and all transaction history and analytics are powered by Druid. Thank you for listening to me and thank you for imply and druid for giving an opportunity to talk about the success story of wave money without imply and druid we will not be here and uh, we would really thank thank you druid and apache for helping us with this transformation thank you all bye